Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day is being observed today. Jalissa Hines reports. International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day is a day for families, friends, and community members to come together in remembrance of babies who have died. This international event also allows people to feel less alone while they grieve their loss. Dr. Diane Thomas, GMO attached to the Regional Health Services Region 6, in an exclusive interview with this newscast, highlighted what is miscarriage and stillbirth. Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day is an annual day of remembrance observed on October 15th today for pregnancy loss and infant death, which includes miscarriages, stillbirths, sudden infant death syndrome, ectopic pregnancy, and the death of a newborn. A miscarriage is a pregnancy lost before 20 weeks. A stillbirth is when a fetus dies after the mother's 20th week of pregnancy. Um, it is divided into three categories. We have early stillbirth. The fetus dies between 20 to 27 weeks. Late stillbirth. The fetus dies between 28 and 36 weeks. And term stillbirth. The fetus dies after 37 weeks of gestation. The goal of this international holiday is to raise awareness about pregnancy and infant loss so that more families know where they can turn for help if they need it. When someone has lost a baby, there are very few places that provide them with information or resources regarding grief counseling. By raising awareness about this cause, you will be helping mothers everywhere to get the support they need during one of the most difficult times in their lives. She then explained what occurs if a pregnant woman has an ectopic pregnancy. Normally, the fertilized egg attaches to the lining of the uterus. And in an ectopic pregnancy, the fertilized eggs implants and grows outside of the main cavity of the uterus, or what we know as the womb. And it can be implanted in the fallopian tube, an ovary, cervix, or even the abdominal cavity. And an ectopic pregnancy cannot proceed normally. The fertilized egg cannot survive. And the growing tissue may cause life-threatening bleeding if not treated. In terms of infant loss, there is neonatal death. This happens in the first 28 days of life. We also have the sudden infant death syndrome, also called crib death or cot death. It is a sudden and unexplained death of a baby younger than one year of age and older than one month of age. Established in 2002 to honor, celebrate, and remember babies who passed away before turning one, the movement began by Robin Baer, Lisa Brown, and Tammy Novak, who petitioned the U.S. federal government to recognize the specific day on October 15th. In 2006, the U.S. government declared October 15th as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day every year. Dr. Thomas also noted the effects of pregnancy and infant loss on the parents and their families. Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day serves to promote greater awareness and support for the estimated one in four individuals and families whose lives are irrevocably altered by the death of their children during pregnancy, at birth, and in infancy. Experiences of loss vary for each individual and family unit. Common effects include guilt, depression, anxiety, changes in relationship, development of unhealthy coping mechanisms, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. These effects are often underestimated, misunderstood, and even overlooked. International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day coincides with Baby Loss Awareness Week, which is observed from October 9th to 15th, and this year's theme is Well-Being. The Remembrance Day also coincides with Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Dr. Thomas then disclosed the pregnancy and infant loss statistics in the world and preventative measures. In 2017, World Health Organization reported that there were 4.1 million deaths of infants that were lost that were one year old. 
World Health Organization also estimated an annual occurrence of 2.6 million stillbirths and between 17 and 22 percent of pregnancies that resulted in miscarriages. Prevention, seek medical care after forced misperiod, that is enrollment in antenatal clinic in the closest health center. If you know you're pregnant, do not smoke, do not use alcohol or any recreational drugs and have a balanced diet. Also for those mothers that have chronic illnesses, control them with your medication. In closing, she said, The loss of a child is, is a difficult topic for everyone involved. And finding the right thing to say is probably the most difficult. Be supportive by helping the parent deal with the life after the loss. Everyone grieves differently, so the loss should never be minimized. And in conclusion, the aim of today is to commemorate babies' lives and support bereaved parents and families, raise awareness about pregnancy and infant loss, and drive change and improvement in care and support. An international wave of light by lighting a candle event will be held at 7 p.m. to honor all babies gone too soon. Persons wear a blue ribbon or a pink and blue ribbon to raise awareness about Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day. Some also donate towards causes dedicated to helping families cope with their loss through organizations which provide support groups for bereaved parents and relatives across the world. Reporting for Channel 8 News, I am Jalissa Hines.